welcome to episode 18 of Songs for the Struggling Artist. I am your host, Emily Davis. That's my name. I don't ha say my name on my blog anywhere, um, and I, I may change that at some point. But on the blog, when I first started, I was writing a lot of stuff that would get me in trouble, um, mostly for the arts organizations that I was teaching for, but various and sundry other things. It's crazy that the arts are a place where one really can't express oneself 100% freely most of the time because of this kind of strange political aspect and not political like elected politics, but political as in how we relate to one another and um, who gets jobs and who gets put where and all kinds of interesting foibles. But uh, I care so little about that shit anymore. <laughs> so I'm happy to tell you that my name is Emily Davis. This is my blog cast. And uh, if I get in trouble, so be it. Um, so today I will be reading to you uh, a blog that I wrote quite a few months ago, um, as is why my want. <laughs> I, I write and then months and months go by before I type and more months after that. No, actually, it's not that long. After I type, there is a shorter journey to publication. But this, uh, this was written a while ago, um, just as I was about to start work on this uh, show that I'm currently working on. And I'm, I'm well into it at this point, which is great and and none of my fears have really mm, and yeah they they haven't really hit um they still could i'm not uh i'm, I'm not going to count any chickens <laughs> yet but um but it is funny um sort of anticip what anticipation can do and what it feels like and how it can be challenging so um, so this is not a current feeling. Sometimes I, I, I write things that are about feelings and people so sweetly and pathetically want to respond with like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, are you okay? And I kind of, I just kind of want to be like, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I really am fine. I'm, in fact, like, in a way, I think I'm more able to publish those kind of vulnerable um, stories when I'm out of the woods, when I'm actually just fine, so that it can be, I can have some distance on it and it doesn't feel quite so raw. Um, but yeah, so uh, on my blog, um, one of my readers told me that this was her favorite thing so far, the best essay yet, she said. So that's kind of nice. Um, and I got a nice, another little sweet message on Facebook about this blog post as well. So I guess it's speaking to, to some people. Um, and I, um, that pleases me. I hope it can be helpful to, to other people. That, that's really why I wrote it. So here it is. It's called The Panic at the Beginning. For about a week, I was crying at pretty much every opportunity. I got on the train, I'd cry. I'd lie on the floor, I'd cry. I'd go to the bathroom, I'd cry. In the moment, the source was not entirely clear, but I finally traced it to the total terror of beginning work on a new show. I didn't always feel terror when starting work on a new show. I used to feel a kind of thrilling excitement, a blind enthusiasm. But then I did a lot of shows, and I went to graduate school where the making of shows went from being a pleasure to a battle. I think I may have a bit of metaphorical PTSD from grad school. There were shows post-grad school that were relatively trouble-free, and there were shows that reinforced the fear, difficult collaborators or challenging circumstances. The fact is, part of the reason I was able to start shows with unbridled enthusiasm at the beginning of my career was because it was the beginning, and I had no idea what sort of challenges might be ahead. My company is 15 years old now, and I have many ideas about what sort of challenges might cross my path as I embark on show development, and very few of them are nice. I am afraid for good reasons. Starting something is scary for everyone, 
but it is especially scary for those who have been burned by experience. The culture gives a lot of support and enthusiasm for people who are just beginning. Theater projects by first-time makers are supported a great deal more than the projects of people who have been at it for a long time. But in a way, those of us who have been at it a long time need more support. We are both tougher and more fragile. I know I am not alone in this. I talked with an artist who is a generation ahead of me who was about to embark on a new project, and he said he felt totally panicked, but also like he couldn't talk about that fear, that after decades in the game, he was supposed to be cool about it. When I first started making shows, people were constantly telling me I was brave, but I wasn't so much brave as naive and energetic. I'm brave now, actually. Now, I feel panic and terror, and I have all kinds of evidence that the odds are not good for my project, but I fight through all of that to do it anyway. And I'm telling you about it because I suspect that you are also brave in some way that isn't flashy or new, but in some quiet, fighting through the weeds way. And if you see me crying, don't worry. It's probably just that I'm starting something. I'll get through it and start that thing regardless. I'm brave like that. So that was the panic at the beginning. Hope it can be helpful to some of you. Um, yeah. So to finish it up here, I'm going, 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 going <laughs> to uh, leave you with a, a little song. Um, the song that I'm going to attack on the end here is uh, one I recorded for a good friend. Um, I may have talked about my lullaby process project before, um, but it, it, it started when a friend of mine had a baby and she said she wished I could be there to, to sing to her child. So I asked her what songs she w would, would like for me to be singing to her child. Um, and then I recorded them for her. Uh, and that project has grown and grown and I've written quite a few lullabies for some of my friends' babies. Not all of them. I have not managed to do all of them because a lot of people have babies. But I have managed to do quite a few. Um, and uh, so this song is actually one of the ones that my friend Robin, who is the, the, the impetus for the Lullaby Project, one of the songs that she she requested and I went to, when I first saw it I was like oh I can't do that song. <laughs> I really was like I don't know how I can't um but but I I messed around with it and I found a way I could I could find a way into it um it's a cover and I do not have the rights for this song so if you would please not sell it to anyone because I I do not have the right to sell it uh that would be awesome I don't think we're in that kind of a situation here, me with my handful of views on the SoundCloud. Um, but, yeah, uh, I, I kind of don't know the ins and outs of, like, publishing covers of things on the Internet. So um, if I get in trouble for this, let me know, because this is actually an area where I feel like... I, it feels like it's okay, because it's just, like, me talking, like, on the radio or something. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so here it is. This is um, uh, a cover of All Through the Night, and um, hopefully it helps with the panic. No, we... 